Finding a Piercer, part two. We're going to talk about um, what you should know, what, what you should ask about, that sort of stuff. Coming up next on Body Piercing Basics, episode 100. So you should probably stick around. For those who are new to the channel, first off, um, welcome to the channel, but you may not know who I am, other than the guy that wears a really big shirt. Yeah, it, it was the last one they had, and uh, they're a great band. Check them out if you haven't. Bad cop, bad cop. Great ladies, too. Really enjoyed them. Anyway, uh, my name is Davo. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio, located right here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So... When I talk to you about these things, I'm talking to you at a level of expertise that comes from being in the body piercing industry for well over 26 years. Not just a guy that wears big shirts. One of the reasons I'm wearing a big shirt is I'm excited. And I want to hide that. Because this is the 100th episode of this particular series. Uh, when I started it, I, was very, I decided that I was going to go into very basic things. That's why if you go all the way back... And we started terms and all kinds of stuff we talk about. Um, and it's kind of evolved from there. And I can thank only my viewers for suggesting ideas or asking questions. My clientele who ask many of these uh, questions or can uh, and bring up these topics. And, you know, my general life. Um, I hope you have been enjoying it. I hope it has been educational. As always, if there's a topic you would like to see me cover, go ahead and make a comment. Because I'd be happy to uh, look at it and go, yeah, I already did that. Here's the video. Or, yeah, uh, that sounds like a good idea. So what are we going to talk about today is finding your piercer. This is part two. The other one was on confirmation, meaning how do you confirm or verify this person actually is what they say they are. Uh, if you'd like to watch that video, I'll try to put up a card if I have time. If not, I will put the link in the description. You should probably watch that. It could be very helpful. What we want to cover today is uh, basically what you should look for, what kind of questions you should ask, kind of things you should think about and know. So I'm going to start this up into eight or divide this up into kind of eight different topics. The first one being is training. Second one would be experience. Third one would be established. Fourth one would be knowing your piercer. I feel like I, I, it's an episode of of, of Jeopardy now. <laughs> uh, professionalism would be the next one. Education, studio and pride of ownership and quality of jewelry. These are all like basic things that we're going to cover today that you should look for and etc. With training, where did they apprentice? Um, that's important. Find out if they did apprentice uh, under someone else. Uh, did they complete the apprenticeship? Who was it with? How long did it last? When did it happen? basic the who what where when hows uh it's important that when you are finding a piercer that they are professionally trained and the only way you become professionally trained is by going through a formal apprenticeship which could last anywhere from a year to two years or longer many times when people take on an apprentice it's for long-term work at that studio meaning they are hiring somebody to train to work in their own studio. They're not training somebody that is going to run off in six months and start a studio across the street or in another city or locale. So talk to them about that. Most piercers, uh, they're very proud of their apprenticeship or their mentor. Uh, they usually have a very good relationship with them. They rely on them for support from time to time. And they've made a lasting friend because they've spent a lot of time with this person. So they're generally pretty proud of who they apprenticed under and happy to share that information, uh, usually in their bio. The next thing you need to know is experience. How much experience does this person have? Experience is important because not only are they going are you going to have a faster piercing, uh, usually less traumatic because they're more experienced at doing them, but you're going to have less problems in the long run. They're also going to be more supportive and more educational because they've learned that nah, that's the easiest way to deal with this is to educate people instead of just going, Here, here's a piece of paper. You're going to read this, right? Okay, see ya. Anyway, um, 
What you want to find out is how long have they been piercing? Um, where have they pierced in the past? If they moved from studio to studio, it's a good idea to find out if that's the case and where they worked at in the past. Some piercers uh, will travel a lot. And one of the reasons why they travel a lot is because they want to learn new stuff. And the only way you really learn new stuff is by being exposed to people that pierce other than the people around you. So they will sometimes uh, go from one studio to another studio to another studio. studio. However, if it's a situation where it's like I worked three months at uh, the place on 28th Street, I worked two months at the place on 35th Street, I worked a month at the place on uh, Ingersoll, I worked six months at, at this place in another city, and then I chances are there's a reason why this person is moving around and shifting so much. I, and we'll get into a little bit about that when we talk about establish. I, it, you just kind of need to have an idea of what their work history is like. Usually, once again, this is something that should be in their online bio. Established is a little bit different because you can kind of go by the studio that they're working at. Um, you could kind of go by how, you know, how long they've been there and et cetera. Um, you really want to ask how long has that business been in business? If it's, uh, something that's uh, been up for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, probably not the best option. That doesn't mean they're terrible. What they do, they may have gone on to, uh, from another studio into a new one. You really need to ask where they've been, and this goes back to experience. Ask where they've pierced in the past. Ask what's been going on in their life, so to speak, and ask about their work history. But uh, one good sign is that it's a well-established studio that has a good reputation and has been around for a long time. Next thing on establishment is this. Do they have a professional website? Meaning, do they have a website for their studio? Do they have uh, information online? Do they have photos of their piercings? Do they have information about the jewelry they stock? Do they have uh, educational information on there? Do they have uh, aftercare instructions on there? Do they have their work history? Their, uh, do they do a blog? Do These are important things. Anybody that's been to my website, axiompiercing.com, knows that I put a lot of work into it. The thing that the most common mistake that people make with business websites is they don't realize that it's an ongoing conversation with their potential clients. It is a way for you to go passively into their business, ask questions, look around, be informed about their business. So having a detailed website that has a lot of good information on it does establish that they're established. They're a real business. They're not fly by night. Next up is, and most people don't really think about this, are they established in social media? Do they post often? Do they have followers? Are there reviews on there? And we're talking about everything. I, personally, I have business and personal accounts on <laughs> Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I think there might be an, uh, still one on Pinterest. Uh, LinkedIn, Tumblr. Snapchat, uh, TikTok, Instagram, if I didn't say that already. Twitter, of course, if I didn't say that already. I, I'm everywhere and have been always. And I have a personal account and I also have a business account. Um, in fact, on Facebook, I think I have three business accounts. So you should look on there. And if you do a search, it'll all pretty much come up either under the person's name or the studio in the person's name. Obviously, probably now, probably you've come across some reviews about this person. And view, reviews are important, and I talked a little bit about that in the confirmation video. But one thing you really want to check out is how they interact with those reviews. Do they respond to them? Does it seem like they're trying to improve the situation, or are they at least thanking somebody to, for giving them a great review? It really says a lot about how they conduct business and how professional they are if they take the time out of their day to respond. Now let's move on to the new, next thing, knowing your piercer. Uh, the first thing is, if you can, it's a good idea to schedule a consultation. Um, a consultation is a chance to come in, have them take a look at the, the area, anatomy, et cetera, cover what the risks are, um, how long it's going to take to heal, what are you going to need to do, things you should consider, um, what jewelry they'd suggest, et cetera. But it gives you an opportunity to start kind of getting an idea of what this person is like. Can you interact with them? Do they seem to volunteer education 
uh, educational information right off the bat? Are they there to inform you? Um, and are they going to take the time? Research your peers are online. Uh, there's usually a lot of information. Like me personally, I already talked about how I have all these social media accounts. And please, everybody, do not message me. Sometimes I can't keep up with them. Um, I will try to get to the comments. That's usually what I can accomplish. But the, all the messaging can, can be a little bit too much because it's in too many different places. Anyway, uh, research them online. Any peers are worth their weight installed is going to have some personal accounts on social media, maybe a personal website. They're also going to have information on the studio's website, uh, maybe a personal uh, uh, profile or something on like LinkedIn. Uh, or LinkedIn. They're going to have a lot of information about themselves because it's a way for them to sell themselves and their services. Like I said earlier, and I've kind of brought this up a, a few times, they should have a bio online that answers a majority of the questions that are in this video. They should talk about where they apprenticed, who they apprenticed under, any additional training they had, where they've worked at, um, where they're located at, maybe a little bit of personal background on them, basically a resume, and that should be posted in public view. It shouldn't be something that you have to dig into to find like some kind of weird I don't know, TV drama, cop drama, where they have to hack into somebody's computer. This should be stuff that you can find easily and readily um, with just a simple search. The next thing I, I think a lot of piercers struggle with, um, I do from time to time, and that is that most piercers are public figures. Maybe tiny, itty-bitty little celebrities, like maybe, uh, I don't know, uh, T-list? <laughs> But we're used to having people come up and talk to us in random places and public places. We're used to people contacting us on our personal profiles and et cetera. Um, we don't really have a way to separate things. So we should be very open. Your piercer should be very open about information, um, not only about uh, piercing, but also themselves. I Personally, I, make a friend, I try to make a friend with every client I have because that's one of the reasons why I like doing this. I like meeting new people. Now let's move on to professionalism. Now there are some things you need to, to look at. Uh, the first one being is how do they interact with you? Are they professional? Are they standoffish? Are they personable, et cetera? How, do that, how does that come across to you? Um, do you feel comfortable with this person? Does this person make you feel at ease? These are very important questions you need to ask because you're going to be relying on this person to do something for you that takes skill and expertise, but you're also going to need them for support. Do they really seem pleasant? Do they like to be here? Do they like to interact with you? Um, if they seem like they do not want to or they seem like you're bothering them, I, they may not be the fit for you. Uh, some people like to just be – they like me to be quiet, not ask them questions, and they kind of visit amongst themselves. Other people, they really need that interaction, that bedside manner. They need to discuss things. They need to get the piercing off their mind. So if uh, they're not – if your piercer is kind of grumpy and kind of standoffish, it's going to make for an – probably un unpleasant uh, experience. This is a huge one with me. Are they openly educational? Meaning, do they volunteer information? Do they want to talk and tell you things to the point where they're blue in their face and you don't want to freaking hear about it anymore? Are they going to be open with that information, not only during the healing or during the piercing and immediately after, but the whole healing process? It's very important to have somebody there that's that's knowledgeable and willing to share that knowledge because they might be knowledgeable, but they're unwilling. If they're unwilling to share it, it's kind of useless to you, isn't it? Now it's hygiene. Are they clean? Are they well kept? Even though they wear shirts that are way too large for them. Are the clothes clean, nails clean? Uh, do they look like they shaved that day? Do they have fairly good breath? Uh, do they look like they're, 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 they're well-kept, clean, and, and practice good hygiene? Because that reflects how they pierce. really does. Because if they're messy in their own personal care, can you imagine what they're going to be like in their uh, own environment that they control every day and that you're relying on to be clean and free of Things that you don't want to take home with you. The last thing is, do they seem rushed? Do they seem like, hey, come on, let's go, 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 let's go. Are they easygoing? Do they? Do you feel like this person is going to spend the time with you that you need 
to get through the process and get educated properly. If you get this feeling that you're being pushed and rushed into something, chances are they're not going to be around to support you in any way, shape, or form. They want to spin the table. They want people in, out, in, out, in, out all day long because that's how they make their money. They're not in here to make long-term clients. They're here to just do piercings, make money, and move on to the next one. Uh, kind of flipping tables like we used to call it in the restaurant business. You, get them, you make everything as uncomfortable as possible so that the people want to get out of there as quickly as possible. Me, personally, I set aside too much time, usually. Um, or I'd run over because I'd rather spend the time with you and get to know you and help you through the process and have you have a good experience. And that it, when you leave here, I feel confident that you've been educated enough to properly take care of that piercing. Plus, there's times where decisions need to be made, and those can't be made instantly. And, you know, I, one of my most common things to do is if people are on the fence about something is, hey, I'll tell you what, I'm not going anywhere but um, I'm going to go take a quick break. You sit down and you think about this, and I'll give you about five, ten minutes. When I come back, we'll make a decision at that point in time. And if the decision's no, that's fine. We'll do it another day, or we won't do it. I'm not the one that's going to end up with the piercing. So giving you that time to give you the knowledge and then make a conscious decision about whether or not it's the right choice for you is very important and sometimes. And if you feel like you're being pushed and rushed, that may not be the best situation, and there might be a reason for that. A lot of times I feel like I'm drumming in the same thing over and over again. But education this is a huge one, as I said with me. Um, do they volunteer information? Do they seem like they're the type of people that just will talk your ear off about anything relating to piercing? But, you know, somebody that could do 100 episodes on just one topic. Anyway, uh, do they give you a pre-piercing consultation? Do they volunteer this regardless if you want to hear it or not? Um, I've had, I don't know how many times I'll start going through the spiel on uh, what I generally go through with a consultation, the very basics about healing, risks, etc. And the person will stop me, interrupt me and go, I've had this done before or I've had 15 piercings. It's like, well, that's great. I'm glad. Um, so this, yeah, uh, but I'm still going to go through all of this. Because things may have changed. Things might be different with this piercing. You may not have thought of something. So I'm going to make sure that you have enough information in that pre-piercing consultation to decide whether or not the piercing is worth the risk and the bother beforehand instead of a week later when you're crying and want to remove the thing because it's a complete pain in the ass. Now, uh, do they cover aftercare instructions verbally and in person? Right now, um, the alternative to that would be offering a video online. Personally, I loved going through aftercare instructions with people. It's one of the things that I always do. I have a whole shtick. It's, it's kind of a comedy routine in ways with uh, pauses and et cetera for people to laugh. Some people get the jokes. Some people don't. But I try to make it as entertaining as possible. But since the uh, pandemic, I'm trying to limit the amount of time I spend with people. So to sit down for anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes, depending on how many questions there are, and go through the aftercare instructions in detail is not something that's safe to do right now. So I do offer online um, a couple of videos or one may or two videos actually that cover pretty much everything I could think of that you would cover in a verbal explanation of aftercare. But this information should be voluntary. You shouldn't have to ask for it. Also, you should get written instructions and they should be available for any questions you have in the future with plenty of contact information. Now, before I move on to the next thing, uh, if you like this video, found it informative, and you would like to see more, uh, give us a thumbs up and then subscribe, hit the notification bell so you're notified every single time we post something. With that out of the way, let's move on to studio and pride of ownership. Uh, the place should look clean and well-maintained. Now, there are days where we're super busy and the place looks like a tornado came through it, but for most of the day, we're trying to keep that up and trying to clean it. Uh, this time of year, because it's cold outside and ice and snow and everything else, it's really difficult to keep the floor clean. I end up mopping it two, three times a day, but it still looks disgusting. Uh, well, not disgusting. It still looks dirty. Um, and basically, it's just full of footprints. It's not anything big, but it's something that I do because I have pride of my studio and my space, um, and I think it's important that I reflect that when clients come in. 
the other thing is, do they maintain the place? Uh, light bulbs, uh, are they burned out? Uh, are there uh, cobwebs in the corner? Are, does it look like it needs to be painted? These things, most studios, the more business they get, the harder it is to do this. But we all try to maintain it because it's it's part of our, our reflection. It's part of our personality. It's part of us. Now, the next thing is, do you feel comfortable there? Um, is this a weird clinical uh, craziness? Does things seem like it doesn't match? Or does it seem like a comfortable environment that feels safe um, and a place where you would like to actually be? The next thing is, does the place seem like an assembly line or that you're at Great Clips or uh, Cost Cutters or someplace like that? Is it kind of a situation where it seems like a custom place? Does it seem like it's a personal or the personality of the people that work there is reflected? Or is it just kind of some clinical thing to get people in and out as quickly as possible and, the, the, and, get, and using as much of the space as possible? One final thing, and before we go into that, uh, if you haven't checked out our merch store, do check it out. Uh, link is in the description. Lots of uh, different designs, different products, and different colors. There you go. So let's talk about quality of jewelry. Um, quality of jewelry is a difficult thing sometimes to, to really figure out. There are some basic things you want to look for, and this is just the basics. Um, you can ask for mill certificates and all that stuff, but the reality is, is most people don't have that stuff sitting around. It's just not something they keep up anymore. Some people do because they, they like going, look, like a report, like a guy that got an A or a gal walking around with a report card all the time. But that's not everybody. So here's a couple things you want to look for or consider. First thing to look at is do they stock internally threaded or externally threaded jewelry? If they don't in stock uh, internally threaded jewelry, threadless jewelry. The truth is, is that externally threaded jewelry is usually a sign of very inexpensive jewelry, very crappy jewelry, and jewelry that may or may not be the material that it claims to be. Um, so it's a good indicator of whether or not they stock better jewelry. Next thing you need to know about pure, about jewelry is do they stock multiple types of materials? Do they stock implant-grade steel? Do they stock um, titanium? Do they stock niobium, gold? Lots of different variety because it points to the fact that they've invested in this business. Um, and, I'm, and another thing is do they have multiple size, styles, shapes, etc.? One of the, if you go into a place and you go to get your eyebrow pierced and they're like, okay, you need a 16 gauge three eighths. And then you go back a two weeks, uh, go back two weeks later and they're like, and you want your nipple done and they go, uh, that'll be a 16 gauge three eighths curved barbell. And you go back a week later and you want a lip piercing and they go, that'll be a 16 gauge three eighths curved barbell. You getting the idea here? They need to have multiple different types of jewelry and sizes to fit. Not only your anatomy, because we're all shaped differently and thicker and thinner and et cetera, but also to, to fit the piercing. Um, for example, uh, if you're getting your lip pierced, it should probably either be done with a ring or a labre set. Uh, possibly a curved barbell if it's a vertical labre, but most of the time, one or the other two, not a curved barbell every single time. If you get your nipple done, you don't want it done at 16 gauge. You want it done at 14 gauge or thicker, and you want a straight barbell, not a curved one. You get the idea. If they've invested, they're into it, they're going to have multiple different types and styles of jewelry to choose from. And I'm not just talking 50,000 different ends. I'm talking about sizes, shapes, colors, material, etc. Well, that's all I have to say about finding uh, finding your piercer, uh, The uh, what you should know. Hope you found this enjoyable and likable. If you have any questions or, cons or you'd like to share your experience, go ahead and leave a comment. I would usually answer them if I have time. I'm a little behind right now. Till next time, here's hoping all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see if your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Take care. Take care of your piercings. And we'll see you in that next video.